tonight on Y News. News website Rappler insists on being Filipino-owned firm after Court of Appeals upholds the registration revocation order of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Nueva Ecija Court issues arrest warrants against four former Makabayan lawmakers, but Solons are decrying the order, citing trumped-up charges. And detained Senator Laila de Lima finally arraigned before Montenlupa Court for the drug-related charges filed against her. Good evening. The Court of Appeals denies the petition of the news website Rappler to reverse the ruling of the Securities and Exchange Commission to revoke its business registration. In January, the SEC revoked the license of Rappler for allegedly violating the constitutional requirement for mass media to be 100% Filipino-owned. In its 72-page ruling issued Thursday, the appellate court indicated that one of the grounds for the rejection was that the purpose of the corporation is patently unconstitutional or contrary to government rules and regulations. The court also noted that the issuance of Philippine depository receipts, a financial instrument allowing foreigners to invest in a Filipino company without owning any part of it, is illegal. The CA ordered the SEC to evaluate the legal effects of the alleged donation of Omidyar Networks of all its PDRs to Rappler staff. Rappler, meanwhile, insisted in a statement that it is completely Philippine-owned and that the CA sided with them on three key issues. The Malacanang, on the other hand, welcomes the court ruling, which likewise supports the Palestinians stance that this case does not involve press freedom but the regulatory powers of the SEC. Meanwhile, a court in Nueva Ecija issues arrest warrants against four former House Makabayan Bloc representatives. Grace Kasin tells us why. The House Makabayan Bloc condemns the issuance of warrants of arrest for four of their former representatives. A court in Nueva Ecija earlier issued a warrant against former Bayan Muna Congressman Saturo Campo and Teddy Casino as well as former Gabriela Women's Party representative and now NAPSI chairperson Diza Massa, and former Anakpawis Party's representative and former DAR Secretary Rafael Mariano, among others. The case was filed by two private individuals, Isabelita Bayudang and Mayumi Peralta, in Nueva Ecija in 2006 under the Arroyo administration. The complainants claim that the said Makabayan members are behind the murder of their spouses who transferred to another party. Peralta and Bayudang also used the case to seek the disqualification of their party list groups, but the Comelec dismissed the claims due to lack of evidence. The Makabayan Bloc notes that the Supreme Court directed the Palayan City Regional Trial Court to decide on the case in 2008. Hence, they are surprised with the timing of the court's order. This is a classic Gloria Macapagalaroyo move when she was in power and is being revived especially now that she is the new House Speaker and is once again vying for more power under charter change, possibly as Prime Minister. The former progressive group representatives, through their counsel, intends to file a motion for a consideration next week on the assailed altered ruling of Palayan RTC. They are also seeking for the help of President Rodrigo Duterte to dismiss the case. But the Malacanang said in a statement that the matter is still with the regional trial court and they should therefore let the legal process run its course. The Camp of Arroyo has so far remained silent on the accusations of the Makabayan group. Grace Castin, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. Senator Laila de Lima refuses to enter a plea during her arraignment for the illegal drug charges filed against her at the Muntinlupa court. My Bermudez tells us why. 
More than a year since her detention, Senator Laila de Lima is finally arraigned before a Muntinlupa court for illegal drug-related charges. De Lima refused to enter a plea before the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court Branch 206, saying she does not recognize the legitimacy and validity of the charges lodged against her. According to court rules, the judge will automatically enter a not guilty plea if the accused refuses to do so. Senator de Lima was able to express her dismay do sa pagpilit ng kanyang arraignment so by saying that she will not enter a plea because she's not recognizing the validity and the legitimacy of the charges against her. Coinciding the arraignment, the court also junked the Lima's motion to quash the amended information of the prosecution team by Judge Lou Navarro Domingo. The senator was detained in February 2017 for allegedly masterminding the illegal drug trade inside the New Belibid prisons when she was the Secretary of Justice under the Aquino government. She has repeatedly dismissed the charges as baseless and calls her ordeal as a case of political persecution. Her camp also expresses disbelief on the estimated 40 witnesses that will testify against her. But the DOJ prosecution team believes it is their right to present their witnesses. These are material witnesses. But during the course of the trial, the prosecution or the defense have the discretion whether to dispense with the presentation of other witnesses. Yung dami ng witnesses, well, it's up to the prosecution. Pero karamihan, napansin namin, mukhang wala na dun sa time frame nung information, ano? The information hanggang December 2015 lang yung mga charges eh. Pero yung mga iba, acts committed 2016 yung kanilang testify eh. Every week, the accused and witnesses are expected to attend the pre-trial which will start on August 3 and is expected to end by October 2019. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Muntinlupa City. A political analyst believes that the anti-corruption drive of the Duterte administration may be affected following the election of former President and now Pampanga Representative Gloria Macapagal Arroyo to House Speakership. Rosalie Cos tells us why. During the six years term of former President Benigno Noynoy Aquino, former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo was tagged as the Queen of Corruption. According to a political analyst, this perception of the public cannot be easily changed. Thus, her election as the new House Speaker may possibly affect the anti-corruption drive of the Duterte administration, according to a political analyst. This is despite Arroyo being legally unliable after courts junked some of the cases filed against her. Kahit legally wala nang uh, masasabi na talagang involved sa corruption si GMA, uh, pero meron kasing parang bombardment ng mga messages na ang Pinoy administration um, was an exact opposite of a corrupt regime during the Arroyo administration. Tapos fresh pa siya. Arroyo's election as president in the 2004 general elections became more controversial after the Hello Garci tape and her infamous I am sorry speech. She was also alleged of various corruption activities after questionable government transactions such as misuse of intelligence fund of the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office, Fertilizer Fund, NBN-ZDE deal among others. Arroyo went under hospital arrest in five years' time from 2011 to 2016. But presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said in a statement that President Duterte did not appoint her as the House Speaker. He said Arroyo was elected by her colleagues in the lower house and this is an internal issue of the said institution. Political analyst Mendoza meanwhile says public perception may change positively if the anti-corruption drive of the Duterte administration will be done effectively and relentlessly. The campaigns and the programs of the president are different from uh, yung KGMA. So parang ano naman doon, uh, siguro ituloy lang yung mga programa uh, against corruption. Uh, siguro in the end, uh, if there is a positive accomplishment, uh, manu-neutralize yung perception. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A lawmaker is pushing for the inclusion of the anti-political dynasty bill in the new charter as the proposal faces rough sailing in the Congress. Nel Maribohok tells us why. 
Former President Aquilino Coco Pimentel supports the passage of a law banning the political dynasty. But amid the rough sailing that the proposal faces, Pimentel believes it would be better if an anti-political dynasty provision will be included in the proposed new constitution. It, for the bill to become law, kailangan ng support ng House. Kung mukhang hindi papasana doon, wala nang time sa constitution na natin ilagay. Self-executing anti political dynasty provision in the Constitution. Last Wednesday, the anti-political dynasty bill already reached the Senate plenary for deliberations. But its counterpart bill in the lower house remains pending in the committee level. The authors of the bill admit that the proposal is difficult to pass. Meron pa isang compromise na parang two at a time, no? kaya nga itawag nila dynast two. Parang yun yung naging ano. Pero he, he, we will explore again. Kung ano na po ang status doon sa House. Nako, dito sa House of Representatives pa lang, eh, more than 75% ng uh, incumbents niyan ay eh, from political dynasties. The lawmakers are hopeful that the anti-political dynasty bill will be approved under the current administration. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Former PBA players will benefit from the first PBA Legends Golf Tournament launched by UNTV. Leslie Longbowen tells us why. It was in April 2015 when the PBA Legends came together for an exhibition game organized by UNTV. It was for the goal to provide medical assistance to former PBA superstar Sam Boy Lim where 1 million pesos was raised. For this reason and Mr. Public Service Kuya Daniel Razon's suggestion, the Samahan ng mga dating professional na basketballista ng Pilipinas Foundation Incorporated was founded. Kuya Daniel gave seed money of 1 million pesos to jumpstart the group's advocacy of helping PBA players in need. And yesterday, the group's project, the first PBA Legends Golf Tournament, was successfully held. For the first time, we know that the first PBA Legends Charity Golf Tournament para na makaliko man ng kon ng pera para pandagdag do sa one million na binigay ni Kuya Daniel. The project will benefit PBA players from 1975 to 1990 who are in need of assistance. Sila na yung mga nasa 50s, 60s already. Then, up, alam mo naman natin, pag senior citizen ka na, marami kang pangangailangan ng maintenance para pang araw-araw na sa pumubuhay. Alam naman natin na sila yung nag-start ng PBA, sila yung pioneer ng PBA, so... Nandito po yung foundation para tulungan sila. Politicians and celebrities also supported the project. It feels great to be part of a worthy endeavor. It gives us a good reason to come out and play golf. It's a lot of fun. Una, una, makakita natin mga idol natin. It's like to, uh, to get uh, close to, with them and to talk to them. At the same time, it's for a cause. Napakamahal magkasakit ngayon. Kaya especially mga wala yung matagal ng natapos yung career. Mabigat, no, para sa kanila. So, maganda itong project. After the event, the group plans to hold a basketball exhibition game for their next project. Leslie Longboen, UNTV News and Rescue, Mandaluyong City. Up next on Y News. The Department of Health expresses alarm as leptospirosis cases in Metro Manila reaches nearly 700. And oil industry players warn of possible increase in the prices of petroleum products next week. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Y News. More reasons behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Trio after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamor Camara. Good evening. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up uh, from where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I'm Angel Diego Castro III. Here are the headlines. Oil industry players warn a possible increase in the prices of petroleum products next week. 
The Department of Health expresses alarm as leptospirosis cases in Metro Manila reaches, reaches nearly 700. And Singapore hospitals tighten their cybersecurity after Sign Health cyber attack. Oil industry players warn of possible increase in the prices of petroleum products next week. Here's why from Monoxon. Oil industry players are seen to adjust their pump prices next week amid geopolitical events that are affecting prices in the world market. According to the Department of Energy, Iran has threatened to block the Strait of Hormuz where large oil tankers pass to deliver fuel to other countries including the Philippines. Iran's tightening of measures is due to the sanctions imposed by the United States in relation to the nuclear framework deal between the two countries. Mukhang hindi maganda kasi base dun sa four days na monitoring namin kasi di ba yung Friday malilit makikita lang namin sa Monday so mukhang magkakaroon ng konting galaw pataas ang petroleum products natin next week. Data from the DOE show that from January up to this week of July petroleum prices rose by more than 8 pesos because of the tax reform law. Without the additional taxes, prices of diesel, gasoline, and kerosene should have been more than 5 pesos only. Meanwhile, DOE is continuously doing its part to increase the number of gasoline stations accepting the fuel subsidy card, recently released to jeepney operators. Currently, there are only 1,100 accredited fuel stations that accept fuel vouchers. Uh, inaanyayahan pa rin namin yung mga ibang oil companies na mag-join sa implementation ng Pantawid Pasada. DOE is still finalizing the circular regarding the unbundling of oil price to inform the public on how the fuel prices are set. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Public Works and Highways and Light Rail Transit Authority Board member Mark Villar is pushing for a staggered implementation of the 5 to 7 pesos increase in LRT fare. Joe Annano tells us why. Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Villar suggests to move at a later time the planned 5 to 7 pesos hike in LRT Line 1. He is also pushing for a staggered implementation of the fare hike to ease the impact on the riding public. Villar is one of the Light Rail Transit Authority board members that reviews and approved the petition for fare hike in LRT1. Siyempre, ayaw din natin masyadong mabilis. It's more, kailangan lang makipag-coordinate para maganda rin yung timing at hindi nakaka, uh, nakakabigat masyado sa ating mga kababayan. According to the management of the LRT1, they are willing to comply with whatever decision that the LRTA board will arrive regarding the issue. Gaya ho na ang alam ho natin is yung inflation ho natin ay uh, nag-increase rin po ng mga prices ng mga bilihin. Ano po. Yan ho yung nangyayari and um, based po doon dahil uh, umakyat ho yung mga costs ng repairs and maintenance. Under the concession agreement last 2014, the fair hike for LRT1 is supposed to be implemented this year. The LRMC says it badly needs to increase the fares to sustain the operating expenses, including the maintenance of the trains, replacement of the rails, and repair of some facilities. It was announced earlier that the fair hike will be implemented in August. But according to the LRMC, this might be moved to a later date because the LRTA board is still deliberating on the matter. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. Quezon City. The Department of Health urges the public and you to observe proper hygiene practices and to protect themselves as the number of leptospirosis cases in Metro Manila continues to spike. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Department of Health expresses alarm over the ballooning number of persons infected with leptospirosis after days of incessant rains. Data from the DOH show that from January 1 to July 25, 2018, 679 cases of leptospirosis have been recorded in the National Capital Region. This is 279% higher compared to the cases reported in the same period last year. With this, the agency is doubling its efforts in visiting communities and schools to conduct information drive on the prevention and transmission of such diseases. Ito po ay isa sa mga activities na ginagawa ng ating uh, departamento sa pamumuno ni Secretary Duque para mas ma 
mas maputol yung transmission ng infection sa ating community. At uh, ini-encourage natin yung active participation ng ating lokal na gobyerno at more importantly, ng ating mga mamamayan. Health officials have also visited some areas in Quezon City after it recorded 209 cases of leptospirosis. Now, bakit po sa uh, schools? Kasi po nakita ng datos natin na most of the time ang naapektuhan ng dengue at naapekto ay ng dengue for one is are the younger age group. Now, pagdating naman sa leptospirosis, eto naman yung mga nagtatrabaho na lumalabas at uh, nagtatrabaho araw-araw at maaari yung uh, dahil sa paglabas nila ay na-expose sila sa tubig baha. DOH also reminds the public anew to observe proper hygiene practices and to avoid wading in flood waters. They also advise the public to immediately seek medical aid when the symptoms manifest like fever, skin discoloration, loss of appetite and nausea as infection complications may lead to death. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Farmers and fishermen received assistance from the Department of Agriculture amid the devastation left by monsoon rains. Clay Palayo tells us why. Fish pen and crops in some parts of northern and central Luzon are still submerged in floodwaters based on the aerial survey conducted by the Department of Agriculture yesterday. This is the result of the week-long effect of monsoon rains induced by the tropical cyclones that entered the Philippine area of responsibility. The Department of Agriculture estimates the agricultural damage to reach 1.55 billion pesos from regions 1, 2, 3, and 4. The agency has conducted consultations with the local government units and farmers in the provinces of Bataan, Tarlac, and Pangasinan. Precedes amounting 81 million pesos will be distributed to affected farmers, while fisher folks will also receive assistance to replace their damaged fishing gears. They can also avail of DA's loaning program of up to 25,000 pesos. Pinol notes that the agricultural damage due to monsoon rains is less than 1% of the national target of production. Yung ating sure loaning program which offers uh... Uh, Three-year uh, loan, uh, no interest, no collateral to uh, farmers and fisher folk affected by uh, the calamity and uh, yung mga binhi na binibigay namin. The official also says that farmers would benefit from the 10 billion pesos tax to be collected if the tarification bill will be passed into law. This is despite the removal of the quota system to make rice importation process more fluid. We can give free seeds to the farmers. We can even subsidize fertilizer and we will be able to achieve our target. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Hospitals in Singapore have tightened their cybersecurity following an attack on Sing Health's database. Here's why from Mary Jo Malariado. Hospitals in Singapore are currently delinking internet access on workstations as part of beefing up cybersecurity after the attack on Singhealth's database last week. Around 1.5 million patients' records were stolen in the attack, including Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long and few other ministers. The hospitals are also working to segregate their network's multi-layer firewalls and continuous security monitoring, removing access to all external storage devices. Internet access has been restricted to work-related websites and to raise awareness among staff and educating them on best practices. Reviewing before giving access to websites is granted and investing in new software to monitor irregularities and malicious activity in the network. Minister in Charge of Cybersecurity, S. Eswaran, said in a statement that that was the most breach of personal data that Singapore has experienced. The attack, which happened between June 27 and July 4 this year, copied and exported illegally patients' NRIC, address, gender, races, and date of birth. Out of these 1.5 million records, 160,000, including PM Lee and a few cabinet ministers, also had their prescription records stolen. A day after the government issued statement about the cyber attack, SingHealth notified patients if their data had been stolen. As of Saturday, more than 700,000 patients have been notified via SMS. Others are via letters. 
Singh Health has alerted the public to suspicious phone calls that have surfaced in the wake of recent cyber attack and asked the public to be aware if they receive phone calls asking for personal and financial information. Opo, lalo na po kasi sa anak po yun eh. At saka, siyempre, baka gamitin po ng di tama ng mga masasamang loob na kumuha po ng ano, information po ng anak ko. Parang, kunyari, yung pong, marami po kasi yung mga cases ng identity theft, hindi lang po dito sa Singapore, lalo na po sa ibang bansa rin po, baka po gamitin ang hindi dapat. Abag po sa cyber attack sa field namin, sa dialysis po, so far po, wala naman po na-apektuhan. So, nagbigay naman sila ng memo na nag-apologize sila. So, smooth naman po yung sa namin. Kita unit namin, wala naman po na-apektuhan. Mary Jo Maleriato, UNTV News and Rescue, Singapore. And for our controversial personality in focus, 2nd District of Capiz, Representative Fredenil Castro's insider info on the ouster of former Speaker Alvarez replaced by former President and Pampanga Representative Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Charlie Barredo tells us more in this report. Fredenil Castro explains that before former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo superseded Pantaleon Alvarez as House Speaker, plots to oust Alvarez were just rumors. He reveals that even if the rumors did exist for quite some time, there was no proof that the plan would expedite. Uh, first, uh, notwithstanding that rumor has been going on a year ago, that uh, there is a move to replace uh, Speaker Alvarez, uh, there was nothing tangible at that point in time that there was really a movement the lawmaker clarified that when he was asked about the supposed plot to remove Alvarez, he would respond by saying that he did not know anything because there was nothing tangible. He also stated that at that point in time, he was convinced that Arroyo was not interested for the House Speaker position. That's why I recall that in my interviews in both print, radio and television, I always said that I do not know of any move to unseat Speaker Alvarez because again, there was nothing tangible. And what I also know is that even Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo was not interested for the position. I don't know whether it was she did not like or she was simply reluctant, but she did not like it to accept the position if even if there was a rumor going on that there is a group who wants her or wanted her to become speaker then after some time it happened last Monday and that was a surprise to me because before the recess, nothing of that sort was heard by the members of uh, the different political parties. Then morning, I learned from my office that there, is, uh, there was an old party member caucus in the house at 8.30 in the morning. While on my way, from the House to Congress, the, uh, uh, Majority Leader Rudy Farinas called me and asked me, is there anything going on? Or what's going on? He said. And honestly, I told him I do not know. When asked if rifts between some members of the House and Alvarez swayed most of the lawmakers to dethrone him as House Speaker, Castro said it could be plausible. However, he stressed that there was nothing evident that could have prompted the movement. Perhaps this could be one of the reasons. And again, perhaps each and every member who voted for GMA has his own reason why uh, she or he went with the tide to unseat Speaker Alvarez. But as common sentiment of everybody, there was really nothing 
that was uh, that was apparent that could have triggered no that uh, uh, move to unseat the previous the former speaker there is also nothing invalid or questionable regarding Arroyo's appointment, Castro underscored, because what was lacking during the first election was completed later on in the afternoon. What was lacking during the first election by the House of Representatives of Speaker Arroyo was repeated uh, in the afternoon. That's why whatever was the defect there, lack of record, uh, to record the number of votes, the roll call, which became questionable for lack of uh, sound system for that matter, was, uh, was confirmed by the proceeding conducted in the afternoon. That everything was in order. The votes were properly accounted. The, the attendance was properly recorded. Charlie Barreto, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. An explosive match between the PNP responders and Ombudsman Graf Busters is expected as the off-season executive face-off finals kicks off on Monday. Bernard Dadis tells us why. After more than two months of heart-thundering matches in the hard court, two indomitable teams emerged to clash in the finals of the UNTV Cup off-season executive face-off. Spectators can expect an explosive game as the PNP responders and the Ombudsman Grubbusters are both eyeing to take home this season's title. The PNP senior cagers are out to avenge their junior's defeat in the hands of the Senate Sentinels in the UNTV Cup Season 6. while the Ombudsman is eyeing to claim its first title in the off-season match. The responders bulldoze its way to the finals by claiming win after win in all their games, while the Grubbusters clinched six victories and sustained only one loss in the hands of the PNP. Both teams have displayed high endurance levels in all their matches this season. Thus, spectators are expected to be at the edge of their seats as the final game opens on Monday, 7 p.m. at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. The winning team will receive 1 million peso cash prize for their chosen beneficiary. But prior to the most anticipated match, selected executives from six participating teams this offseason will play in an exhibition game. Burger Daddy's UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. North Korea transfers remains of Korean War soldiers as its first step in realizing June 12 summit commitments. And a rare cartoon connected to Benjamin Franklin now up for auction. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Y News returns with William Theo. I'm Angelo Castro III. Good evening. And to complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. 
News website Rappler insists that it is completely Filipino owned after the Court of Appeals upheld the ruling of the Securities and Exchange Commission to revoke its business registration. In January, the SEC revoked the license of Rappler for allegedly violating the constitutional requirement for mass media to be 100% Filipino owned. The appellate court indicated in its 72-page ruling that one of the grounds for the dismissal was that the purpose of the corporation is patently contrary to government rules and regulations. The court also noted that the issuance of Philippine depository receipts, which allows foreigners to invest in a Filipino company without owning any part of it, is not legal. The, CI, the CA rather, meanwhile ordered the SEC to evaluate the legal effect of the alleged donation of Omidyar Network of all its PDRs to Rappler. The Malacanang, on the other hand, welcomes the court ruling which supports its stance that this case involves the regulatory powers of the SEC and not press freedom. <music> Meanwhile, the House Makabayan bloc decries the issuance of warrants of arrest for four of their former congressmen over murder charges filed in 2004. The warrants issued by a Nueva Ecija court are for former Bayan Muna Congressman Satur Ocampo and Teddy Casino former Gabriela Women's Party representative and now NAPC chairperson Lisa Massa, former Anakpawis Party List representative and former Agrarian Reform Secretary Rafael Mariano. The Makabayan Bloc notes the timing of the arrest order because the Supreme Court directed the Palayan City Regional Trial Court to decide on the case in 2008. This is a classic Gloria Makapagalaroyo move when she was in power and is being revived, especially now that she is the new House Speaker and is once again vying for more power under charter change, possibly as Prime Minister. The Camp of Arroyo, meanwhile, remains mum on the allegations. The former progressive group representatives, through their council, intends to file a motion for reconsideration next week. And in other news, Senator Laila de Lima is finally arraigned more than a year since her detention for illegal drug-related charges. De Lima faced the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court Branch 206 for her arraignment earlier, but she refused to enter a plea, saying she does not recognize the legitimacy and validity of the charges filed against her. She has repeatedly dismissed the charges as baseless and calls her ordeal as a case of political persecution. In accordance with the court rules, the judge automatically entered a not guilty plea for the accused. Her camp also expresses disbelief on the estimated 40 witnesses who will testify against her every week when the pretrial begins on August 3. Yung dami ng witnesses, well, it's up to the prosecution, pero karamihan napansin namin mukhang wala na dun sa time frame nung information, ano? The information hanggang December 2015 lang yung mga charges eh, pero yung mga iba Acts committed 2016 yung kanilang testify. Eh. Oil firms are seen to implement hike in price pump prices next week amid ongoing geopolitical events in other countries. The Department of Energy or DOE says the adjustment of prices is due to the tightening of measures in Iran following sanctions imposed by the U.S. in relation to the nuclear framework deal between the two countries. Iran has earlier threatened to block the Strait of Hormuz where the large oil tankers pass to deliver fuel to other nations, including the Philippines. Mukhang hindi maganda. Kasi base dun sa four days na monitoring namin, kasi di ba yung Friday, malilit, makikita lang namin sa Monday, so mukhang magkakaroon ng konting galaw pataas ang petroleum products natin next week. The Department of Health or DOH urges the public anew to avoid wading in floodwaters this rainy season amid the spiking cases of leptospirosis infection in Metro Manila. DOH reports show that from January 1st to July 25th, 2018, the National Capital Region have recorded 679 cases, which is 279% higher than the number reported in the same period in 2017. With this, the agency is doubling its efforts in visiting communities and schools to conduct information drive on the transmission and prevention of such disease. They also advise the public to immediately seek medical aid when the symptoms manifest like fever, rashes, 
skin discoloration and nausea to prevent any complications that may lead to death. Now, bakit po sa uh, schools? Kasi po nakita ng datos natin na most of the time ang naapektuhan ng dengue at naapekto ay ng dengue for one is are the younger age group. Now, pagdating naman sa leptospirosis, eto naman yung mga nagtatrabaho na lumalabas at uh, nagtatrabaho araw-araw at maaari yung uh, dahil sa paglabas nila ay na-expose sila sa tubig baha. Hospitals in Singapore are implementing tightened cybersecurity measures following attack on Sing Health's database last week. The hospitals have delinked the internet access on workstations, segregated their networks, and removed access to all external storage devices while putting up multi-layered firewalls. Internet access among its staff has also been restricted to work-related websites. The attack, which happened between June 27 to July 4 this year, copied and illegally exported around 1.5 million patients' records, including Prime Minister Li Shenlong and few other ministers. Sing Health has alerted the public to suspicious phone calls asking for personal information following the recent cyber attack. Opo, lalo na po kasi sa anak po yun eh. At saka, siyempre, baka gamitin po ng di tama ng mga masasamang loob na kumuha po ng ano, information po ng anak ko. Parang, kunyari, yung pong marami po kasi yung mga cases ng identity theft, hindi lang po dito sa Singapore, lalo na po sa ibang bansa rin po, baka po gamitin ang hindi dapat. Weather will not be favorable to those with outdoor activities in some areas of Luzon and Visayas this weekend. Leslie Longbowen is at the UNTV Weather Center to tell us why. Leslie? Yes, good evening. Rainy weather is expected to persist this weekend. At 3 p.m. today, the low pressure area was located at 80 kilometers east northeast of Infanta, Quezon. Meanwhile, southwest monsoon still affects the western sections of Luzon and Visayas. Cloudy skies with moderate to occasionally heavy rains and thunderstorms will be experienced over Mindoro provinces and northern Palawan. Light to moderate rains and thunderstorms will prevail over Metro Manila, Calabar Zone, Central Luzon, Bicol Region, Marinduque, Romblon, the rest of, Pal of Palawan and Visayas. While the rest of the country will experience fair weather. According to Pag-asa, temperature in Metro Manila tomorrow will range from 25 to 29 degrees Celsius, 16 to 23 degrees Celsius in Baguio City, 25 to 32 degrees Celsius in Metro Cebu, and 25 to 33 degrees Celsius in Metro Davao. Tomorrow, the sun is expected to rise at 5.38 in the morning. That's the weather forecast. Back to the studio. Thank you very much, Leslie Longbowen from the UNTV Weather Center. And for the news abroad, North Korea transfers the remains of an unspecified number of soldiers killed in the Korean War. The repatriation of remains of U.S. soldiers missing in the 1950 to 1953 conflict is seen as a modest diplomatic coup for U.S. President Donald Trump because it was one of the agreements reached during his summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Singapore on June 12. While South Korean President Moon Jae-in says the return of the remains could boost the momentum for the nuclear talks between Pyongyang and Washington. The repatriation of remains coincides with the 65th anniversary of the 1953 armistice agreement that ended the fighting, although the two Koreas are technically still at war because a peace treaty was never signed. More than 7,700 U.S. troops who fought in the Korean War remain unaccounted for, with about 5,300 of those lost in what is now North Korea. Officials from El Salvador, Guatemala and Mexico are calling on the United States to explain on the still-separated migrant families despite a court deadline. Meanwhile, southern Spain struggles to cope as migrant arrivals surge. Sonny Koss explains why. Guatemala foreign officials meet with their counterparts from El Salvador and Mexico in Honduras on Thursday to call on the United States to provide details on migrant families still separated. This is after Washington reported hundreds of minors have not yet been reunited with their parents. 
Honduran officials say they have had difficulty getting information from the U.S. government about detained Honduran children. We reiterate our request to the government of the United States of America to receive clear and precise information on the family reunification process. Also, we repeat our commitment to continue to call for the human rights of our people to be respected, regardless of their migratory status. The U.S. government said in a court filing that more than 1,400 children out of over 2,500 separated at the U.S.-Mexican border as a consequence of the Trump administration's zero-tolerance policy on illegal immigration have been reunited with their parents. 711 other children were not eligible for reunification with their parents by Thursday's deadline set by a federal judge in San Diego. In more than 400 of these cases, it was because the parents were no longer in the United States. We believe that this is fundamental, that this reunification be completed in the shortest amount of time as possible. The Trump administration's zero-tolerance policy toward illegal immigration led to the separation of about 2,500 children while their parents, some asylum seekers, went through a legal process. Meanwhile, Spain's Andalusia region struggles to cope up the recent surge in migrant arrivals, prompting the regional president on Thursday to call on other Spanish regions to take in migrants. With Spain overtaking Greece and Italy as the main entry point for migrants trying to reach Europe, Andalusia is the main entry point for migrants from North Africa. We want to send a message to Brussels because things cannot remain in just words in relation to the countries that look the other way, leaving the responsibility to others. And I insist we need a lot of coordination with Morocco, which is the point of origin. Sanikos, UN TV News and Rescue. Lao authorities are appealing for help as they begin searching for survivors and sending aid to villages heavily hit after a jam collapsed in Atapu province. Stephanie C. tells us why. Relief goods are in dire need in worst hit villages after a dam collapsed on Monday in Salmon Shai district of Lao's southern Atapu province. The Shepan Shen Namnoi hydropower dam, which was still under construction when it collapsed late Monday, released up to 5 billion cubic meters of water in hours. 26 people have been killed and 131 others are missing as of Thursday. Six villages in Samanshai were flooded, affecting over 6,600 residents. The government and a large number of citizens have been working together to search for survivors. However, due to bad weather, the Lao troops haven't been able to increase the initial number of rescuers. We have sent 104 soldiers in this area to carry out search and rescue, and these soldiers have been deployed to several areas. During the rescue operation, the teams found a number of survivors trapped in the flooded water, including children and seniors. Many of them hadn't eaten anything for almost two or three days. Local authorities have already started delivering aid, but it is still hampered by sludges covering the roads and bridges. All parties have started to transport relief goods here, but we still need more help as there are so many affected people here. At present, the living goods including drinking water, tents and cotton quilts are in dire need here. We delivered the second batch. We will transport more relief goods here from Vientiane later. The constructed Shenpan Shen Namnoi hydropower plant is a joint venture of the Republic of Korea, Thai and Lao companies. The project is estimated to cost 1.02 billion US dollars and generate 1,860 gigawatt hours of electricity a year. Stephanie C, UN TV News and Rescue, Southeast Asia. Meanwhile, heavy rains caused flooding in parts of Athens following a deadly fire that killed over 80 people. Meanwhile, cricket legend Imran Khan declares victory despite accusations of rigging in a historic Pakistan election. Here's why from Kaftu Maraus. In Pakistan. Cricket legend Imran Khan declares victory in a divisive general election as his rivals cry foul. Supporters of jailed former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, who accused Khan of colluding with the still-powerful army, claims the vote count was rigged following a long delay in the ballot counting. 
but Khan believes this was the most transparent election and is willing to investigate concerns of rigging. His success in July 25 election is a stunning rise for an anti-corruption crusader who has spent much of his political career on the fringes of Pakistan politics, but now stands on the brink of becoming the country's prime minister. In Germany, German firefighters work to get a forest fire under control at the Fichtenwald forest. The blaze, an hour outside of Berlin, covered 90 hectares of woodland. Firefighters battling the blaze were forced to close off the A9 motorway, which lies adjacent to the Fichtenwald forest, leading to traffic diversions along the route. Fire services expect to get the fire under control, but could not give the official all clear as the wind direction is changing. And in Greece, a sudden downpour causes heavy flooding in an area of Athens. Videos uploaded to social media show cars and motorcycles driving through flooded roads and some stranded cars. The flash flood occurred as the country attempted to recover from a deadly fire east of Athens, killing at least 83 people and injuring over 180 persons, including 22 children. Meteorologists say rain is expected across the country, with only very light rain sweeping across the fire-hit region. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Chris Froome's bad day continued after a difficult 7th, 17th stage of the Tour de France when he crashed while riding down his to his team bus. Team Sky says a police officer asked Froome to stop causing him to crash after he was mistaken for a fan. Images posted on social media show Froome crashing at the side of the road before his heated exchange with a conflicted police officer. Froome's wife, Michelle, says he was not injured in the said crash. The defending champion hopes of winning a fifth title faded when he crackled, cracked in the finale of the last 16-kilometer climb up to the Col de Forte. A page from the Pennsylvania Gazette newspaper is expected to fetch thousands of dollars as it goes under the hammer this week. Leslie Longbowen tells us why. A single page of newspaper is going under the hammer at auction Thursday with a starting price of $40,000. What makes this single piece of paper from the 1754 Pennsylvania Gazette newspaper so important is that it contains a cartoon which is seen as one of the most important in American history. Michael Kirk, an auctioneer at Nate D. Sanders Auction House, says the image served as an icon of the Revolutionary War and it was originally published 22 years before the Revolutionary War in 1754 by none other than Benjamin Franklin. This is the most or one of the most important political cartoons in American history and one of the earliest by none other than Benjamin Franklin who created it and published it in his newspaper, the Pennsylvania Gazette. The image is of a disjointed rattlesnake cut into eight pieces to represent the American colonies with the caption, Join or Die. Kirk says this was to implore the British colonists or eight colonies to come together to fight the French. So Benjamin Franklin was a master at symbolism and propaganda, certain, and propaganda to a certain extent. So, uh, and this cartoon serves as a great example of that. With, within three succinct and powerful words, he um, conveys life or death consequences, join or die, and also uh, uh, has a call to action. Are you in or are you out? Benjamin Franklin is seen as one of America's founding fathers and was a leading scientist, politician, and humorist, among other things. The cartoon was used several times in numerous publications, but the 1754 Pennsylvania Gazette was the first ever printing of the iconic image. Lassie Longboan, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news July 27, 2018. On behalf of Rina Villamor Camara and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening.